have your pet peeve in bonsai yet, Julian? Uh, what's that? Have you thought of your pet peeve for bonsai yet? Uh, yeah, I, I have thought of one. And I, I guess this is kind of like uh, maybe other people share the, the same sentiment for you know those who are current professionals or, or trying to be. And I feel a lot of the, the kind of bonsai culture and mindset, um, especially in the U.S., is people want, you know, like really accelerated uh, results. Um, uh, they want the work, you know, to look good now, the tree to advance um, to refinement stage now. Um, but, you know, developing bonsai is a very uh, long term and invested endeavor. And in a tree's life, you know, there's different stages of development where you're growing different aspects of the tree, the, the body root spread, uh, trunk, branches, and so forth. And if you try to, like, accelerate that process and you want such a high degree of refinement um, early on in the tree's development, uh, more often than not, um, you take shortcuts, you know, compromising on the tree's you know, structure, the quality that, you know, in the long term uh, hinders the growth. Um, so I guess a, a pet peeve of mine is, is sometimes, uh, if people, you know, want me to take something that's, you know, really not at the stage to be work on, uh, for health um, or, or other reasons, but, you know, they expect, um, you know, really refined, uh, result that you see in some of the work in Japan. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, kind of what other people told me is that, you know, bonsai, you could say it's like um, maybe 60, 70% the tree and 30, 40% the artist. Um, so, you know, you do have some control to exert over, um, you know, the result and the direction of the tree. Um, but at the same point, uh, you should kind of use the tree as a guideline to see what you can and can't do. Um, take the good and bad attributes, understand the health and the horticulture uh, to bring out, you know, a sustainable result. Um, I kind of went into that a bit deeper, but I, I guess a pet peeve is um, I, I don't like uh, people expecting instant uh, instant bonsai because there's no such thing. Mm. It's kind of interesting because I feel like in one sense, training in Japan, like the nursery culture, would you say kind of like prioritizes speed of development? Like they might try to grow from seed as fast as they can and things like that. But on the other hand, they know everything there is to know about the horticulture, basically, to know like how to do that safely, I guess, how to push trees to their limit without killing them or things like that. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Uh, Andy, do you have any pet peeves yet? Um, kind of. I guess going off of what Julian said, that's like, I've always thought about that too. And from my perspective, working in a collection, it's like, you know, people come and see you know, John Nock is Goshen and you're like, they're like, oh my gosh, like, how do I have one of those? And I'm like, they just think it is very insane. And, you know, we, mm -hmm. I, we don't have a lot of educational stuff around. Um, we do have things kind of in and out depending, but it's like, I'm not there to tell them, you know, people think that bonsai is an instant thing and they don't like realize that it's like the top tier of like what you're getting to. And like in any of the collections, it's like, it, it's cool for people to see, but I think it'd be cool if a little bit to have, uh, like, I know Aaron Packard for a little bit when he was over at the National Collection did a kind of step-by-step, -step, like, exhibit of, like, this is creating, it's called Becoming a Bonsai, and I thought that was yeah. cool, like, for people to kind of understand that process, especially, like, thinking outside of, you know, getting more people into bonsai, you, they got to really establish that first because they're going to get really out of it really quick. And I mean, also going off that, like, I that kind of my pet peeve too, I guess, one of my big ones, I guess, with what Julian said, going off of that also is like, the, if you're doing bonsai for the final result, you probably should not be just buying nice trees that are already completed and not trying to develop your own. Because unless you, I mean, that's the whole fun of bonsai for a lot of us, I think, is that, that process part. I mean, it is a process art and there really is a never a finish. I mean, it could get in a collection, but then you know, the symmetry forms and then you got to remove things and it's always changing. So mm -hmm. that, and then my other personal pet peeve, I guess would be like just people being so closed minded to other like styles and being like very, like almost overly loyal to different artists. And like, I am, I can see my sense kind of like, I'm like, I very much like Dan and I very, like I came and spent time with Dan uh, last year up in uh, Bremerton and, I learned a ton from him and it's really interesting like 
to hear what other people on the East Coast say about, you know, Dan and his styling and what people have said about that. And it's like, you know, why can't you just appreciate his art for what it is? Or why can't you appreciate Nick Len's art for what it is? It's not you like you can not like it, but that doesn't mean it's wrong. And that's kind of my thing. It's like just because someone does something different, people are like, oh, that's like not bonsai. But you're like, well, isn't bonsai an art? And how is there a right or a wrong in art? That's kind of my biggest pet peeve. Mm. Yeah, there. I don't know if it's true in other countries. Maybe Julian can comment on this since he worked in Japan for a while. But it does seem like, at least online, the American bonsai community, by and large, has like a strict style preferences. Like they like trees that look like every tree in Japan and, you know, kind of a dome and all that and less deadwood or maybe certain types of deadwood. Like they don't like softwood um you know, hollows on maples, for example, or at least some people I've met don't like that. Um, I forget where I was going with this, but <laughs> definitely seems like that is a big topic of conversation in both sides. 